And a jolly good morning to you. This is Newsline live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And unfortunately, it is yet another wet day. Um, and uh, relief efforts are underway. And uh, at, um, uh, at our group uh, down here at the head office, uh, the uh, Sirisa Shakti uh, relief program is um, uh, again, uh, we'll, we'll leave this morning with uh, uh, relief items donated by, uh, by you, uh, our viewers, the members of the public who've turned up here uh, with alarming regularity and, uh, and donated uh, dry goods uh, to, to be distributed amongst the needy. And actually, uh, th this is a good point that we can start off uh, discussions with our guest this morning, who's no stranger to all of you, uh, is in fact no stranger at all in our country, uh, Professor Rajiva Vijay Singer. Very good morning to you. Morning. Uh, good to be here again after a long time. Indeed, mm. indeed. You've been traveling around yep. and uh, exploring the world. Yeah. But uh, whilst you've been doing that, I was uh, wondering uh, if you had a take on, I hear some members uh, of parliament asking for a debate on the, um, on the flooding and so on. Well, with all due respect to our legislators who are asking for this, don't, do you think, Rajiva uh, Vijay Singh, that the need of the moment is to have a parliamentary debate or is it better for all the parliamentarians to get down to grassroots? There are 19 districts, I believe, that have been affected by the flooding. And to get down to the grassroots and see what they can do to alleviate the problem, the suffering of the people. Over 125,000 people have been affected by the flooding. 30,900 plus uh, families. Uh, you know, so th that, that's, that's a telling number. What's more important right now? Well, I think for us, you have created a false dichotomy because there are several issues that you raised, each yeah. of which is important. Yeah. The first is the question of immediate relief yeah. to the people on the ground. Yeah. And that, of course, is the vital question at the moment. Now, I think the basic problem I face with the way this country is run is the politicization of everything. Mm. You know, Relief for the people who are suffering is all about getting credit for the relief. You know, I'm not uh, criticizing you all. I think uh, Sirisa, etc. does a great job in TV. But uh, there is an element of look at what we're doing. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. But ultimately, all this shouldn't take away from the fact that we got to have systems in place yeah. that make sure that relief is provided as essential. Indeed. That's one area. Yeah. Uh, too much participation by politicians would be a mistake. Their involvement is fine, yeah. but the mechanism should be actually developed by a government, mm. meaning the executive. Mm. Now that brings me to another question, which is you talked about the parliamentary debate. Mm. Now what this country needs mm. is a water policy. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm tired of saying I told you so, yeah. I'm getting so old. But when I was uh, advised on reconciliation, yeah. I still have the letters. I wrote to Mahindra Rajapaksa yeah. because I used to do a lot of visits in the east. Mm. And every time I went, they were either suffering from flood yeah. or from drought. Right. And I said, there are two very serious questions that you must address immediately. Yeah. One is the elephant question. Right. It's come again and again because people were suffering. Mm. But of course, one of the reasons they were suffering, and Vasanta Senaka, who's actually one of the uh, ministers who actually thinks, yeah. did a study of this. And he's perfectly correct because mm. you've, that a lot of the grounds on which the elephants graze yeah. have been now handed over to cattle. Right. And the elephants then have to move elsewhere mm -hmm. and of course you then have the elephant people conflict mm -hmm. but again that relates to something that we also wrote we brought it up in parliament in 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 cope the need for a milk policy yeah. it is so horrifying that you know india in 1948 had no milk yeah and now it is overflowing with milk it's right. got a wonderful state the amul system that the private sector is also involved the state did a great job yeah india is butter cheese milk mm. they have a lot of it Sri Lanka has done nothing about it. What happens? The whole subject was entrusted to Arumugam Tondaman. I mean, the grandfather tried to do something, mm -hmm. but 
and come used to watch videos and not do anything. Mm. His ministry was a mess. Now again, nothing is happening. But with regard to water, I told the president, you must start developing a policy. Because you have this situation where when it rains, there are floods, mm. then there's no water. Reservoirs have to be developed, but yes, you sir. also need to think very seriously. Now, I don't know the answers right. because this requires irrigation engineers, it requires study. Indeed. But this should have been put in place in 2010. Mm. What is happening is year after year, the impact of rains is getting worse, more and more people are suffering. The amount of money that has to be spent in relief, in rehousing, all that mounts up. And if we had started studying this seriously, mm. you see, one of the things that, again, I suggested to the president, I, I don't know whether you remember, but when, you know, Roosevelt took power in America and there were lots of problems, yeah. he started what's called the Tennessee Valley Authority, mm -hmm. which worked in deprived areas. It covered a lot of states. And again, we have areas where you can do a trans-provincial yeah. policy. And that created jobs, it brought relief, it improved both agriculture and industry. And it's that sort of vision that's necessary. Indeed. But that didn't happen. It can still happen. You, you, you appear to have a point. I, I, look, I researched this on Google Earth. Right. And I looked at the Kaluganga. And as we examined the images of the Kaluganga working upwards, uh, mm -hmm. away from Colombo, um, I noticed that at various points, the river was getting uh, significantly narrow. Uh, we also noticed there was uh, uh, sand mining going on. And at, at, in some images, you could see uh, that the, the river was quite shallow because you could see the, uh, uh, the, the ground. And, you know, it struck me that there is apparently no ma river management. The, the mouth of the river uh, where the water needs to flow out, especially when it's been raining. You see, the, 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 the power coming down will obviously push, uh, will give the river more, uh, more, more power. And therefore, if you clean the mouth up and uh, dredge it um, in time, then the water will flow out because the force is there and there's no need to worry. And if, you, if there's an issue about the salinity levels where the sea is flowing back, they can always cover it up again. But this requires active participation. I then had a look at a couple of rivers uh, in Thailand and the, 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 uh, the difference is startling because you can see that the, the size of the river the, the width is maintained and you can it's absolutely blessed pristine and that's because they have an active um, uh, river management system in place over here yesterday the uh, director general of the uh, disaster management center um, um, dr uh, amalanand was here and he told us that they have the equipment in place they have i asked him in an ideal world what are you missing he said, well, we've got all the equipment. We've got over 242 boats, he said, for mm. example, with engines. And only just under half had been deployed because that's what was required. So, but he said the most important thing to do was to listen to the early warnings that the centers are putting out. And he was a, he was a bit uh, buoyed by the fact that this year, the people seem to have been taken, taking more notice of these early warnings. But again, he said that there was a lot of work to do. Uh, the, the Met Department, he said, needs to be upgraded and, and they need the latest equipment. And the irrigation people, they need to get together with the councils. And there's encroachment going on, there's garbage. He told us that garbage collection was the biggest problem. And even as we spoke yesterday, the cleanup operation at the river mouth in Kalutara uh, was uh, was going on, and it was garbage that was the problem. So, yeah, for, for us, I mean, I think the points you raised are very, very good, and I think one key, and again, this shows the politicisation, yeah. is the work of the disaster management centre, uh, which has done been good. If you read my memoirs of that period, yeah. I've actually talked of the way that under General Garmini Hetterachi, who was a wonderful head of the DMC, yeah. 
uh, and he worked initially, I think, in other ways, to then under Mahindra Samrasinghe. They set up this early warning system. Yeah. You know, instead of the expensive towers, what was important is to make sure that the last mile was covered. Yeah. And he had set up a very good system. One of the biggest problems this country faces is that when ministers come in, they sack everybody. Yeah. Ranil turned it into a fine art. You know, when they got rid of Shanika Himbruagama against my better judgment, yeah. and I protested. Yeah. When he thought he could pacify, he said, no, no, you can appoint anyone you like, but you have to get them to resign and then appoint them. Because they must know they got their appointments from us and not from Mahindra Rajapaksa. Right. Now, what happens when that principle comes in, and it's happening again and again and again, yeah. is A, people are shoved out, yeah. whether or not they're doing a good job. Yeah. I remember when uh, I, was, uh, I was chairman of the TVC, yeah. when Chandma Virakkadi was appointed instead of Mahindra Samra Singh, he told me, you know, I'm going to keep you on, but I'm getting rid of everyone else. Right. No, I think he thought I should be grateful. Personally, I think he should have been grateful because, you know, when Mahinda asked me, he turned the favor to him. Yeah. But I told him, keep some of the good people. I mentioned Garmini Hetya, actually, yeah. who was head of the VTA. No, 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 all new people come in. And now, Sarat in between, Chandra got rid of me when I wouldn't appoint people that he wanted. Mm. But now, Sarat has come in and is also replacing people. You know, that's not a problem, but then there's no mechanism for handovers. Mm. You know, when I was got rid of, I wrote to my successor saying, shall we have a handover so I can tell you what's happening. Mm. I wrote to Austin Fernando who sent the letter sacking me, mm. saying, please arrange a handover. But, you know, it's all very well to appoint someone who knows nothing of the subject because she's a civil servant. Mm. She could have learned. Mm. But someone has to teach her. Mm. Now, with regard to disaster management, you know, when Fauzi took over, yes. he, there was absolutely no continuity and a lot of the plans my uh, Garmin had put in place had vanished. Mm -hmm. And then you change ministers all the time and mm -hmm. coordination is lacking. You know, when I was secretary of that ministry, I found that I was supposed to be in charge of waterways, the cleaning. And I chaired a committee, not the only judges. Yes. And then I found that the coordination was very messy. The only people who work here, and these, I have an admiration for Gota Abiraj mm. The Navy had done a fantastic job in what had been entrusted to it, the canal cleaning and all that. Mm. But things were divided. You had the uh, low-lying board, the land reclamation board. Mm. You had municipalities. The garbage is a case in point. Now, all that requires coordination. And what should have happened is that there should have been a body coordinating under the civilian ministry, but with the Navy doing the running because they had the expertise. Mm. And where they worked, it was magnificent, as you know, everyone has realized with regard to the Colombo waterways. Mm. Mm. But all that collapsed afterwards. So these are areas where the coordination is necessary. Yeah. The, the study of the whole vision, you were talking about the Kaluganga. Yeah. It does have gaps, I know that well, mm. because I have a place that's just above one of the narrows. Yeah. You can't actually, the difference between Thailand and us is we have rock formations, you can't blast them. Thailand right. is more flat, right. so the smooth progress is easier because of these rocks that are important. Yeah. But then you must have a mechanism to siphon off where it's necessary, yeah. the water that builds up. Well, the, 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 the other complaint that uh, uh, the Director General uh, mentioned was that uh, the catchment areas uh, have also been encroached upon and so on, uh, and, and there's no enforcement by the uh, local authorities Absolutely, there. because again, too much power is given to local authorities. Yeah. So, you know, Sri Lanka, you know, okay, we'll stop this, but you know, that's my uncle's great-grand-nephew, right. so I can't stop him. So each person has one or two exceptions. Right. So the result is that what should be an absolutely zero tolerance policy yeah. turns into a little bit of tolerance of one or then the other. And that is why, again, you must stop this politicization. You know, one of the biggest problems we have had yeah. is the way that polit politicians interfere everywhere. Yeah. And the executive is no longer independent. Yeah. Now, the executive yeah. should really be the public servants and you know many of the divisional secretaries are very good. I remember when I was in charge of reconciliation I worked out with the UN they did a how to actually ensure coordination between the divisional secretariat 
and the Pradesh Sabha mm. to make sure that they didn't overlap, didn't issue conflicting versions. Yeah. And the primacy should be with the divisional secretary. Now, one of the most important things in uh, Maithribala Sirisena's manifesto, which even he has now forgotten, mm. is to make the divisional secretariat the, the center for services to the people. And that is a very easy <coughs> thing to do because all government or, or ministries that count are represented at the divisional secretariat. Mm -hmm. But they must take their orders from a coordinating person. Now that doesn't happen. So everyone does their own thing and everyone is subject to political interference. Mm -hmm. And you know it will take a disaster like this for people to wake up. But the minute the disaster finishes they will go back to sleep. They will be very happy at all the relief they have provided yeah. and the policies that are necessary to streamline, to make sure that disasters don't occur again, mm -hmm. completely forgotten. Um, if, if we can move on to, towards this issue of leadership. Um, some days um, after this uh, uh, talking about the cabinet reshuffle and so on, uh, we had our Prime Minister uh, declare and uh, he was captured on television and he was talking about he said oh you know now the about roads you know we we had tenders so what did we do we had tenders that's I mean he must know that that's not that's only partly true when if we look at the um, uh, Central Expressway section 3 they had a tender of sorts they invited, they, they somehow or other, they got hold, the RDA got hold, roped in the Japanese ambassador and got him to recommend three companies um, for, for the construction part and three for the uh, consultancy. But of the three uh, for the con con uh, construction part, the, the one had, uh, uh, was Taisei, they, they've had, they have a track record, um, but the other two, uh, had nothing, no experience uh, that would match the uh, the requirements of Section Three, and those uh, requirements were put together by the RDA. Now that the the fa the so-called one person that was responsive uh, didn't put a bid bond. That, that's a significant deviation in, term in the world of tenders. Now the the ordinary thing and the right thing and the established procedure would be would have been to cancel that because there was no responsive bids and to recall a tender. They didn't do that. In, again, they had the same lot and they had another mysterious fourth bidder came along. And then we had the, the situation where the minister in charge of this, uh, that subject, at the time, Lakshman Kiriyala, is having meetings with bidders, you know, uh, people who are bidding, making a bid for this, for this project. And he's having meetings without even the presence of the ministry secretary there. The, the, the rules in place have cabinet appointed standing committees on procurement, on evaluation, on negotiation, on whatever. There is no role for the minister to have, be having meetings with contractors and deciding on fates of projects. And so here the, the prime minister is saying, is pretending to have had um, a sort of open, transparent policy. It's complete nonsense. <laughs> yeah, but as you know, whatever the Prime Minister says, yeah. you have to assume that the opposite is true. Right. Now, I don't know these details for us. I'm glad no. you brought them to the readers. But if you remember in 2015, yeah. I was seriously upset, as indeed you were, yeah. about the fact that the Prime Minister having told Cabinet that he didn't want unsolicited projects. That's right. On the promptly, 30th promptly. of March 2015 is the... Uh, is the two weeks later, he brought a proposal which was an unsolicited project with regard to highways. That's right. You also, also to remember that Lakshman Kiriyalda, I think he's Minister of Candian Development and not Candian Heritage. That's right. What the difference is, I don't know. I suppose yeah. you develop without looking at the heritage. Yeah. But then but, we have somebody else's... Yeah, okay, you have a Minister of Candian Heritage. Poor Sarat Amurgam has to do it along with vocational training. Yeah. But it seems to me that Lakshman Tirayala is in the best tradition of political Candian heritage. Right. Which is a DB Vijay Tunga line, when the spoon is in your hands, you help yourself. Right. And I think Tirayala had a lovely time. That's why he had highways, that's why he takes with him what he wants. Yeah. And he's unashamed. 
ashamed after all as he keeps telling us he inherited a massive fortune so he doesn't need to make money yeah and therefore all these little meetings he has and whatever transpires then has to be in the national interest. national interest and that's all right. this goes back to the point i made about the interference of the executive and the destruction of the civil service you know i'm actually working although i'm no longer in the nhrdc the opa yeah. has taken up this uh, uh, report that i did for the nhrdc yeah. on better ways of working in the public sector yeah. and one important thing is to strengthen the civil service and develop our secretaries mm. and give them strength mm. but when you have a system where they all get sacked when you know there's a new government mm. when ministers appoint their own secretaries they yeah. play ball yeah. so this kirala secretary who also had to look after higher education i Indeed. think at the same time yeah. um you know didn't come to the meeting he didn't even complain yes. but what you really need is a strong president yes. and i'm afraid mr sirisena is not a strong president i hasten to that mahindra rajpaksa had the capacity to be strong and was a very very good president in his first term in his second term he sort of abdicated a lot of responsibility and allowed people like sajin vaskuna wotan etc to make decisions and that was a pity but i think they should take a leaf from mahathir's book mm. uh or premadasa's you know premadasa made sure that his ministers performed and he didn't allow He was a bit of a workaholic. He was a workaholic, and I think you need a workaholic. And Mahathir himself is hands-on, even at ninety-two. Mm. And I think you need that sort of approach to make sure that these individuals Does will make money. Does that mean we have to wait that there's a possibility that R. W. will be around when he's ninety-two? R. W. will certainly be around when he's ninety-two and still leader of the UNP. Whether he's prime minister or not is another question. Right. But I think he'll continue as leader of the UNP for at least another twenty-five years. Right. Uh, Fifty years would be a pretty good record, wouldn't it? Indeed. But uh, the point is, he cannot perform. Whereas Mahathir went away. Rani will never go away. And Mahathir came back when an emergency arose. Yes. And as you know, I mean, all these revelations about what's happening in Malaysia and the Sri Lankan rupees yes. suggest that there's a certain linkage between yes. our so Prime Minister and the former Prime Minister. Najib Razak to have come to Sri Lanka and been accorded the full uh, battery of state, uh, uh, you know, acceptance and so on, uh, keeping with norms. It's, uh, and I find it odd only because Najib Razak, at, even at that time, had been openly named by. the United States Department of Justice uh, as being militia number 1 in in terms of their investigation into one the 1 MDB scandal in which uh, they reckon that about 4.5 billion with a b uh, US dollars uh, was siphoned out of a state fund and that approximately 700 million dollars of that ended up in the personal bank account of um the prime minister najib raza now this this is not some or claim made by some journalist anywhere somewhere in malaysia uh it was a, a a statement made by the us department of justice and they have already started um they had and they have already uh sequestered various sort of funds and uh, blocked it off and as the us department uh, of justice said they're doing this and they 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 have become the policemen of the malaysian people um and uh, even the proceeds of um uh, the uh, the film uh, the name uh, escapes me but even that was uh, um uh, blocked off by the department of justice and i only hope the americans do the same with regard to our bond scam and actually investigate well it's never be a good to, idea to happen to all the money now, of finally, course the difference is this yes that because ranil has total control of his party yeah. you will find nothing in his personal bank account no because all the money that mahendra and loish has sent so no that's made, that's actually that's used, something yes was actually used yeah. but because he controls the party and continues to control the party and now has a totally complacent yeah. treasurer and like in the days when iran vikramratna at least you know you could think that the man did have some sort of back yeah. harsha has none so you have a situation where the control of the funds will continue no, no, this is but very, only the americans yeah. if they only looked into because they know how disgraceful yeah. the corruption was with yeah. regard to the bond scam yeah. and uh, i'm afraid i think ranil could put najib in the shade if you look at the comparative sizes of the economy no, in terms the, of this, the scam this, this against the other, country this is the other thing now we have confirmation yesterday uh in in some co proceedings that uh, the singaporean uh, um, branch of interpol have confirmed that arjuna mahendran is in singapore yeah. now then the prime minister 
has been the person who has provided the cover, the, the backup, and the support of Arjuna Mahendran. Now, it's a little bit rich for the Prime Minister to say that Tamba Satyak Paduak Name Ratata. Not a red cent has been lost by the state. That's complete and utter rubbish, Mr. Prime Minister, and you know it as much as we do. And that is because what of the EPF and ETF funds? Why are they not talking about the additional six billion made by perpetual treasuries post 31st of March 2016? Nobody's talking about that because the terms of reference of the Presidential Commission of Inquiry finished on the 31st of March 2016. They didn't go, they didn't look beyond that. But that's the date this was issued. No one's talking about that. No, it is a if, tragedy. And if, if Maitri Pala Sirisena doesn't do something about it, I mean, it was brave of and him. And I want to say this very quickly, uh, mm. Rajiva. Now, yesterday we were also treated to this information, which is now being carried in, in yeah. all the papers, that a new PFA MP received a million rupees from a PTO subsidiary. Uh, well, uh, Daesu Jai Sekra uh, is the person uh, involved in that particular uh, transaction. And he told me that, yes, this was a political uh, donation during the election. I was the chief minister and I was running for... Uh, some sort of election. Right. The when point is... But surely this happened after 2015. Indeed, yes. So when did he get the donation? Um, the... the uh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't have the, the details of the date. But it was in, inside in this new... during this new uh, good governance business. Now that... And of course the point is... The point is If this, he got it after that, he knew yes. that they had been involved in the scam. The point is so this... it's a bit disgraceful. Yes, the point is this. Sad. If... Obviously the Attorney General's Department have got all the details. That's why they're, they're putting it out like this. Yeah. And if they have the details of this check and uh, that Dyson Jai Sekre was the recipient via his uh, security man and so on, and there's another, somebody else unnamed as well in the same position, then they must also have full details of all the checks that were issued by these various subsidiary and connected mm. companies. And why are they not telling us, if you made a net profit of 18 billion, the, the gross amount would have been at least 30% more than that. Mm. And why are they not telling us who the recipients are of all those other checks. No, I think Is it because it will lead towards the United National Party or some other party or some other individual? Is that the reason why? Well, I have no idea. I think Yasanta Kodagoda is someone quite honest, and if you were given his head, he would reveal everything. Yeah. That's why he was not allowed to question the Prime Minister, if you Indeed. remember. Yes. Um, no, I think these things will come out, but it will be a very, very slow process. And I suppose it will be a close-run thing if Maitri Bala Sirisena recognizes that he cannot protect people anymore and must allow the corruption to be very, very clear. And then I hope it will sweep the Prime Minister plus this crew of absolute crooks away. I, I hope that... Uh, I, are you going to Singapore on your travels? In I never go to Singapore. Right. Well, I hope that I have those some people... good taste. Ah, perhaps. right. Well, I hope that the people who do travel uh, on a regular basis to Singapore and perhaps visit little India and so on and who might walk around Cascaden Road and so on will keep an eye out. Uh, for Arjuna Mahendran because the Singaporean authorities have now confirmed that they, he is there and so it is now incumbent upon the person who appointed and recommended and, recommended and swore that he would come to face trial uh, yes, remember and he, he said, told us he, that yes, nothing said, wrong was done and he will face trial that's right and then and, and he can clear his name well Mr. Prime Minister why don't you keep to your word he Bring, can't I mean, he's never even dreamt of telling the truth I mean, he, in but the last two years, he's got worse affairs. and worse and worse. And I only hope the UNP actually now begins to realize what a liar he is. I think those who believed in his pleasures of reform have now realized that's not happened. That, that's As again, you probably that's know, he, he's now persecuting Hirunika Premachandra, although many people objected, yeah. I suppose, as she herself thinks, because he, he, she's a woman, he thinks he can attack her. Yeah. And asking her for explanations through his creature, Akela Viraj. Yeah. Of course, the charges uh, relate to violation of the UNP constitution, which no one has a copy of. Indeed. Because, as you know, it's a very secretive document and it changes. Every so, few and months. this is the man who's supposed to be leader of 
one of the oldest political parties in the country, and, and certainly who's been uh, at the forefront of uh, politics. And in I our think country. it's very, very sad that Maitripala Sirisena, who I don't think is dishonest the way Ranil is, continues to protect him continues to allow him to mislead the country, continues to allow him to keep the fruits of his ill-gotten gains. And I do hope that at least some courageous people in the UNP will now take steps. I also hope that the joint opposition will realize, given the parliamentary figures, that they should not be running around demanding the post of Prime Minister. The Prime Minister should, at least initially, be from the UNP mm. and for 18 months or 16 months or whatever is left, that's not a problem. But provided it is someone who will stop persecuting the joint opposition, Indeed. who will recognize that it represents the alternative government and that alternative seems ever closer, and will therefore work together with the decent, honest people in the UNP to make the change that this country so desperately needs. Uh, Professor Rajiv Singh, thank you very much for having been on Newsline. And uh, um, up front and open as always. Thank you. And uh, that's the way it was on Newsline on uh, Friday, the 25th of May 2018. Uh, the relief efforts are underway. You can still help us. Uh, you can help the people out there um, by contacting us. You know, the, the collection centers are still here. On that note, uh, take care. Our thoughts are indeed with all those affected. Uh, people uh, in this latest flood situation and um, our thoughts and prayers very much with them. On that note, take care and God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali.